should we pay reparations to our former colonies? In my judgment, it would be patronising and unnecessary to do so. The world has moved on from the colonial era. The Ali? colonial period was a phase in world development. Indigenous populations suffered loss of land, livelihood, and died in military encounters. British colonial administrators and workers also dropped like flies from malaria, dengue fever, riot, gut rot, and plenty of other things. Many of these men and women died working on infrastructure projects which improved the health and welfare of the population. Building hospitals and sewers, constructing roads and railways, putting in schools and teachers, working as doctors and nurses. There was sacrifice on both sides. So how can you construct a balance sheet that gives us a number that can be used in the compensation equation? Did Britain set back the economic prosperity and opportunity of the colonies? I don't believe that anyone can legitimately argue that we did. <laughs> British, British administrations invested heavily in physical infrastructure, health projects, developed markets for local goods and raw materials, and legal regimes based on the British system. Some, such as Nigeria, Hong Kong and Singapore, have become the wealthiest countries in the world. I'm reminded of another aspect of British rule which lives on in former colonies. Democracy and the parliamentary process. A speaker or a president presides over a parliament. I won't, thank you. Elected MPs face each other and debate the legislative pros proposals before votes are taken. I've seen the same process in parliaments right across the world. Ancient Greece may have presided over the birth of democracy, but Britain has spread it far and wide. I wait, thanks. And in the post-imperial world, independent countries have not overturned it. That reparations should be made when there is a specific injustice that needs to be remedied. And we've heard plenty of it today, like the Mau Mau in Kenya. But to ask today's taxpayers to finance reparations to the free citizens of independent states merely assuages a 21st century guilt. And Britain is already doing more than most. I'm proud of the fact that the United Kingdom has, is one of the few countries that has met the UN target of 0.7% of GDP. The wealthiest countries in the world are helping the poorest voluntarily, and that includes British aid to India. To demand even more is to maintain the old inferiority complex and fail to recognise what is happening. 